Leave the surprises <laughs> until last. Of course, South Africa, you might be wondering who is standing beside me looking ever so beautiful. Thank you so much for joining me. It is the Indigenous Food Revivalist. Mm -hmm. It is Ziana Khan. Yeah. So you seem... Thank you very much. So you seem to have something special for us today, and I'm very excited because we are tackling all things fermentation in the kitchen. Mm -hmm, we are, and we're going to dive a little bit into fermentation. And today, our fermentation lead, the host, the real host here, is going to be the Clover Bliss yogurt, and mm -hmm. we're going to see how we can use one product in a variety of applications through fermentation to make dishes that we all know mm -hmm. and yeah. love because of heritage. We're going to start off by making a labna, which is a kind of a yogurty cheese, and we'll separate that into the curds and the whey, which we have here, and that will then go on to make some other recipes, like Anel has got some mm. fermented chili sauce that she's going to make for us, Lovely. which will then go into a chili chakalaka, mm. which we'll be eating with some fricadels. Mm. Absolutely delicious. And then we've got some, uh, um, Tumi's gonna make us some ketchup that we'll be using Ooh. the whey for. Um, and then we'll also be making some uh, snook pate mm. wow. that we'll be using the whey with. And then a cheesecake, Whoa. a thick worm cheesecake. Now South Africa, uh, we, you already know that it is Heritage Month and we are drawing near to the end of September. So if you would like to be making this local is liquor dish and reviving all things fermentation and indigenous food, please do head over to afternoonexpress.co.za and you can get these ingredients and the recipe. But ladies, let's get cooking. Let's I'm very this. excited on social media. <laughs> Don't forget to engage with us throughout the show. We are asking you, fill in the blank. Blank, I can add it to anything. I wonder what, the, I would say salt. Mm. <laughs> but don't, yeah, yeah. let's not give away our answers just yet. Let's hear from South Africa throughout the show. But let's get cooking. Yay. Okay, so we'll start off with making. Should we make the labna first? Yes. And then we can separate and, and show everybody how they're going to make. Okay. Can we please, if you can pass the labna Sure, definitely. Uh, this so, is quite a contraption here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe let us know what exactly that is. So, Dumi yesterday hung this up. It's so basically decanted a bliss a yogurt. Um, and so what then happens is, if you can just lift the bowl up to show yes. us, you, you've got this, like the all the liquid that mm. lives inside this little bucky yeah. then drips out in from this cheesecloth. And oh. you want to basically do this because you want to keep the essence, the, the, the yogurty goodness. And mm. I'll show you what that looks like. So we put it in our bowl. This contraption is so smart. I love this. So this specific technique, is this something that we can find throughout the fermentation process and in creating a labna? Or is this something specifically special that we've kind of put together here? Exactly. When you're ever you're making things like, uh, like cheese, for example, when you need to extract the liquid out of something, the cheesecloth becomes so simple, mm. a simple way to do that. And you can use a fadu, you can use any cloth okay. that has enough holes in it so it's not entirely must be breathable must be breathable okay um, because you want the liquid to drain through so the one method is to do it as Numi's done there but you can also simply take a jar that's kind of big enough you want enough space so i usually just put my my whole fist into it mm. and then secure it with a Elastic. This is a great project to do with kids also. I love it's that. To do, right? And, you know, at Afternoon Express, we are a family. Everyone likes to get involved and get yeah. stuck in when it comes to cooking. And it's always nice to have something fun for the kids to do and get involved with when they're making food. Yeah. Because, you know, sometimes we want to make sure that they know what's good and what goes into making dinner. But at the same time, we it's, it's a nice bonding experience. And it's totally fun. And then, you, you know, you, you, you convince them much easier to work in the kitchen with you. Mm. Yeah. Yes, I love that. So now this, and don't worry, this literally takes, you're going to give it about a day or a night. Yeah? So the best thing is to do it overnight and then let it hang. And by the morning, you'll have some liquid. Um, sometimes, because it's like the double cream tends to have less liquid in it. Yes. And so we just need to be mindful of that. You'll have, you'll, so if you have a, a, a less creamy kind of yogurt, you'll get more liquid out of it. So, Jan, I just mm. want to ask you, do you leave that in the fridge or outside to? Outside. Outside, okay. But now there's two different ways to do it. Yeah that we must be mindful of. The one is that if you want it in a sweet application, like we're going to make cheesecake, for example, yeah. you hang it net so. Mm. If you want to use it, like with the double cream, it'll work very well also, um, and you want to extract more liquid, you add salt to it first. Oh, yes. And just, I mean, like a, a sprinkling. 
yeah, yeah. teaspoon, basically, just to give it that salt kick, because the salt helps to extract all that liquid. Yes. Wow. Look, right? Zayn, I know we're going on about fermentation, but I think I'd like you to just maybe break it down for South Africa. What actually is fermentation mm -hmm. and what, it, what what is it good for? So fermentation is, is creating food with the help of invisible friends, the microbes, the bacteria, oh. the yeast. And so we make um, yogurt is taking milk and ma using bacteria to make yogurt. Mm -hmm. Same thing process mm -hmm. to make cheese. But also we see examples here all over the jars. These are um, lactoferments mm -hmm. where you, you kind of sink things into, into salt water and that helps to mm -hmm. process um, bacteria and yeasts to make it very probiotic. Mm -hmm. We've heard this word before. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's probiotic. It's very good for our gut, gut. intestinal health and in fact also for our mental health, for all kinds of health. I like so that. So it's very important for us to integrate it. So I quickly want to show you one way that you can prepare the labna as is. This one is quite thick so we take a little bit of salt. Okay. Well let's actually divide it up first because we want to keep some for a sweet application. Oh, so this is essentially mm. when we're dividing it. Because remember, South Africa, we have promised you a cheesecake at the end of the show. <laughs> cheesecake, exactly. But now we're just diving into all things the labna. So for our viewers who are unfamiliar with what labna is, what kind of a dish is it? And how is it a celebration of not only Middle Eastern cuisine, but Mzansi and all things South African? You know, it's it's one of the things that we are so that unites us also as a nation is curry. Mm. Everybody mm. eats curry, it doesn't matter where you're from. So labna is a nice way to kind of pull all those flavors together. We call it almost a, a palate cleanser. Mm. You can use it in that way. And it makes it also easy for people who, who can't take the strong flavors. <laughs> you know what I mean? So a nice way to serve it, a very simple way, is to take the labna and plate it up. Okay. So simple pimple, as my mom said. I love that. <laughs> Ziana, I, I've got some things that are fun here. I yeah. see I've got some, is this honey? I mean, Anele was telling me what to do with this and we, what, how will this be incorporated in the meal? We're going to make this sauce here. It's like a chili sauce. And I tasted it earlier on. Mm. Uh -huh. It's delicious. Strong. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. <laughs> so you're going to pound those, just crush your sesame seeds, the honey, and I'm going to pass you some chilies that you're going to crush in there. Can I just put all of them in? Yes, just okay. put all of them in. I think so. Don't be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> and then the honey as well. And then you're going to pound it away. Okay. And then I just kind of grind it up until yes. it's fine. Yes. Now, what I like about this method is it reminds me of, you know, oko, oko, num. Yes. Back in the day in KZN. <laughs> this is essentially how they would grind their herbs. I'm talking about All Things Heritage Month, mm -hmm. taking it back to the basics. Yeah, basically. So I'm also doing something over here. I've started with the ketchup that we're making, right? You said I must mm. mix in the ingredients that we had. So I started off with some tomato paste. I had some allspice, some coriander. I have some salt, a bit of honey. And I've also got some garlic that I've chopped and put in yes. there. And this is some apple cider vinegar. What Wait else do I... Wait for the apple cider vinegar okay, first. Yes. Because what's nice about it is that you can make the flavours as you wish. So if oh. this family member likes cinnamon, you make it with the cinnamon. Mm. So you can make it sweeter, you can make mm. it a little bit more savoury. It's up to you. And once we've mixed everything together, yeah. we add the whey. Okay. Because the whey is going to help us to, so you can add a little bit of this. Okay, let's do and that. And that's there. going to, to give you the kind of consistency that you like. If you like it thick, add a little bit less. But you need to add some whey because it needs to ferment. Ferment. So this is basically like a starter process for our fermentation exactly. for the ketchup. Exactly. I'm not sure if South Africa Kick heard. Start. We're making ketchup from scratch and it's going to be fermented. And we're using Tomato the ingredients sauce. you have at home. Tomato paste, all those spices. You can get it all on Afternoon Express. So I've added my whey here. And I like my tomato tomato ketchup very thick so I think I'll leave it as is totally but we've also got some that we made earlier so mm -hmm. this is basically basically ketchup you can use it on your fries mm. you can use it in a mixture we're bringing it into your fricadels later that we're going to be making yes. yes and that ketchup has got the completely different flavor profile mm. it, it, and I've tasted your ketchup before and it actually livened up my whole palate Ooh, that ketchup. Wow. It's, it's like it's alive it's living when I tasted <laughs> totally. it, it it was like running around on my tongue it's like making a party <laughs> My tongue. I it love that. Delicious. Okay, so we are now heading towards the end of making this delicious labna. My chili sauce, ooh, South Africa is going to be hot, <laughs> hot, hot. Because be Anele has helped me here with these um, chili, little chopped up Yo, chilies. chilies yeah. um, with the sesame seeds and the honey, this is going to be delicious. I've ground it up quite nice and finely. That labna seems to be perfectly put mm. together. I'm so excited for that palate cleanser as we get into the rest of the ingredients and the recipes that we're making throughout the show. Thank <laughs> you.
Now, now that you know how to make your own labna at home, we're going to show you just how versatile this delicacy is in as an ingredient. Coming up, we incorporate it in our snook pate, use our fermented chilies to make a chakalaka and serve it with those fricadels. With the creamy decadence of double cream bliss from Clover, yogurt has never been so irresistible. Made with love by Clover.